This is a KRQE News 13 Monsoon Weather Special. Hello and welcome to the 2023 KRQE Monsoon Weather Special. I'm Chief Meteorologist Grant Tostrud and over the next half hour, we'll take a look at the upcoming monsoon season, how El Nino could affect our weather this summer, and of course, our monsoon forecast. We'll also sit down with a hydrologist from the National Weather Service to talk about what the monsoon means for our rivers. But first, last year's monsoon was one for the record books. Here is a recap of some of the incredible rainfall and flooding we saw across New Mexico. The 2022 monsoon could not have come at a better time as record dry weather, low humidity and strong winds led to the worst wildfire season on record in the state last spring. We have a lot of heritage in there. It is where I grew up. It is where I learned how to ride a bicycle. It's where I swam in its acequias. So it's painful to me to see my home up in smoke. The monsoon began with the flip of a switch in June of last year, helping to extinguish the fires burning across the state. A healthy start to the monsoon was followed by a wet July and August, with many areas seeing above average rainfall as thunderstorms developed nearly every afternoon. All that heavy rain falling over wildfire burn scar areas meant flash flooding was a daily occurrence. I've lived here for 50 years. I've never seen. This is like a 500 year flood, not a 100 year flood. The National Weather Service in Albuquerque issued a record 249 flash flood warnings during the monsoon, nearly doubling the previous high. When the monsoon tapered off in late September, Parts of the state had received over two feet of rainfall, with Albuquerque seeing the 10th wettest monsoon on record. So what is the monsoon? Well, meteorologist Erica Meyer is here to show you how the monsoon pattern sets up. Erica. So what exactly is the monsoon? Well, the monsoon is when we see a change in our weather pattern seasonally. During most of the year, we see dry westerly winds coming in over the state and keeping us very dry. But during the summer season, we start to see a shift of southerly winds into our southwest region, which starts to bring in a lot more moisture. Now, during the summer monsoon, there are several different monsoon patterns that we can see across the southwest. And that first one is going to be the most beneficial for us. This one yields the most rainfall statewide. It's when we see high pressure over the southern plains, a low to the west, which funnels in Gulf and Pacific moisture, bringing widespread storms to New Mexico. Then we can also see just a smaller area of high pressure planting itself over the Four Corners region. This allows easterly waves to propagate into the state and also brings tropical surges of moisture into the south and east. Another type of pattern that we can see is when high pressure parks itself further to the west of New Mexico, allowing backdoor cold fronts to bring in moisture. This is favorable for rainfall in the Rio Grande Valley and even severe weather across the East Plains. And for our last type of monsoon pattern, it's when we see that high parking itself in a wide area over Arizona and New Mexico. This brings in the heaviest rain to the mountains with slow moving storms and even flash flooding, which is one thing that we want to talk about. Zoe, back to you. Thanks, Erica. Yes, unfortunately, a lot of rain does create the potential for burn scar flash flooding. Normally, that thick growth in the mountains effectively absorbs all of the rain that does fall. But when a fire sweeps through, it burns and it quickly strips the trees of all of that undergrowth that normally absorbs that rainfall. It creates what we know as hydrophobic soil that doesn't allow any rain to sink into the soil. So what happens when a lot of rain falls is it very quickly picks up all of the debris all of the burnt ash that's on top of it and it pushes it down the mountains and it creates those really gross flash floods and we do have the potential for it over the most recent burn scars the Luna Cooks Peak Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon all the way over to the Cerro Pilato Nogal Canyon McBride Bear Trap and Black Burn Scars keep that in mind over the most recent burn scars we do have the potential for flash flooding but also flash flooding can happen in other places Erica Myers you'll have those details that's right, Zoe. Arroyo flooding is one type of flash flooding that occurs across this state very frequently during the monsoon season. With a network of arroyos across the state, water from a storm can quickly fill these and it can lead to that flooding happening with little to no warning. It's important to know never to drive or walk through flooded arroyos or roadways in which those arroyos can pass through. Six inches of moving water can knock you off your feet and 12 inches of water can even float a car. 
It's going to be hard to compete with last year's impressive monsoon rainfall across the state. However, we have one factor we haven't seen in the last three years, El Nino, and this could play a role in the rain we received this summer. Now, if you remember over the last three years, we've been impacted by what's called La Nina. In fact, we've even been calling it a triple dip La Nina because we had it three years in a row. This is thanks to a stronger than normal trade wind out across the equator. This allows for upwelling or colder air from below the ocean surface to make its way up to the surface, and this has been keeping colder than average sea surface temperatures out across the west coast of South America for the last three years. This has even brought below average snowfall across parts of the state over the last three winters. However, those trade winds have finally started to weaken, allowing for warmer than average sea surface temperatures out along the west coast of South America. As you can see here with all these warmer temperatures that are making their way back out across the eastern equatorial Pacific, and we're going to continue to see this trend with well above average sea surface temperatures continuing not only this summer, but into this winter. And those warmer than average sea surface temperatures could play an impact in our monsoon. Here's meteorologist Erica Meyer to show you how. Well, Grant, as you mentioned, the effects of the El Nino are more noticeable during the winter season, and they have less of an effect during the summer months. However, we still could see some minor impacts from the El Nino during this summer season and the monsoon. And so we are during this season of the El Nino as it starts to strengthen, seeing warmer temperatures in the eastern equatorial Pacific, which will lead to more convection in that area and stronger storm activity. But as we see storms rise, well, air has to fall, and that typically happens just north of there in Mexico, and that's where our monsoon gets started. Now, that means that we could end up seeing drier air moving into our area as we start out our monsoon season. And for a look at other years that we compare to with the El Nino, Zoe, over to you. Thanks, Erica. Yes, we have a couple other years that have similar setups to what we're seeing this year when it comes to that transition from La Nina to El Nino. Three of the most similar years were 1972, 2002, and 2009. But unfortunately, the monsoon those years were very different. So taking a closer look at what 1972 looked like, we actually saw below average temperatures statewide, even though our sea surface temperatures were over a degree above average. Now take a look at our precipitation. We saw well above average precipitation in 1972, actually three inches above average statewide for the monsoon. Now check out what happened back in 2009, a very different outcome from a very similar setup. Average precipitation about a half of an inch below average and average temperatures almost an inch uh, or almost a degree above average. So it really depends what different weather systems kind of go into the monsoon. There's a lot of different factors that go into how much rain we receive. And Grant, you have our final forecast letting us know exactly what we might expect. Thank you, Zoe. Well, it's the moment we've all been waiting for our official monsoon forecast for this summer. Unfortunately, El Nino might not play the best impact for us as it will especially come with warmer than average temperatures for nearly the entire state. In fact, there is good confidence that much of New Mexico is going to be experiencing warmer than normal temperatures as we head through these summer months. So expect a hotter summer with higher confidence above average temperatures across the western half of New Mexico. Now, as Erica said, we can also expect to see some drier air get brought up into the state and unfortunately that looks like it could be the case as we head through this summer as a higher confidence of below average precipitation out across the western part of New Mexico. This is a part of the state that actually saw very heavy rainfall last year, but that could change as we head through these summer months. So more likely than not, we're going to be looking at above average temperatures all across New Mexico as we head through the summer months and that's through August and even into September. We're going to be looking at below average to some areas seen near average precipitation as we hit through the summer too. Doesn't mean we're going to be seeing a completely dry summer, but it'll likely be a little bit quieter than what we saw last year with all that heavy rain we saw. El Nino may not even play a huge factor as we head through the monsoon as we typically see the bigger effects of, the El, of El Nino during the winter months as precipitation varies from event to event during these El Nino years, but it is likely going to bring us some below average conditions as we head through this summer months. Welcome back to the KRQE Monsoon Weather Special. We're sitting down and talking with Andrew Mangum here, Senior Service Hydrologist with the National Weather Service in Albuquerque. You know, water is always a to hot topic here in New Mexico, but last year's monsoon oh. and last winter were very wet for a lot of the states. So can you tell us the impact that those two seasons had on New Mexico? 
Yeah, there are a lot of impacts. So let's start with one of the big ones that's you know, there on everyone's mind in this state, and that's drought. If you look, look, look back at this state this time last year, about 85% of the state was in D3 and D4, which are our two worst categories of drought. Right now it's 5% which is really remarkable, a huge amount of improvement in one year. And that's all down to the fact that we had one of the heaviest monsoon seasons we've ever had. Uh, and we had a snowpack that really blew past all of our estimations of what we were gonna get. We had sites that were way past their record. And when I say sites, I mean our snow tell sites up in the mountains. But yeah, some of those sites were 900% of normal. So, I mean, just a really impressive snowpack. That in turn has brought some challenges and also some benefits. So our water supply, situation this year is way better than it was last year, way better than it's been for a few years. We're seeing our reservoirs go up. We're seeing the farmers get the allocations that they need. We're also seeing some pretty high flows in the rivers and that's causing some issues. Uh, we're getting, you know, the Rio Grande right now is almost seven feet, which is something that looks completely different to people's <laughs> eyes than yeah. it has normally mm -hmm. looked. And we're seeing erosion along the riverbanks. A lot of these riverbanks have not been tested for a few years. Mm -hmm. And now these high flows are coming in and there's more sediment in the channel than we're getting ready for, so we're getting flooding a little bit sooner than we would think. And some of those banks are getting chewed up, and we have been having things like water rescues as people fall into the river. So mm -hmm. it's a mixed bag, but mostly it's good news because we really need the water. So mm -hmm. what parts of the state are still struggling with that water? Even though we did yeah. have such a good monsoon and storms last winter, are there still parts of the state struggling? Oh yeah, so if you get east of the Sangres, the state is really dry. So we talk about a heavy monsoon, we talk about heavy snows, but this was really the tale of two states, right? This was central and western New Mexico that got all the benefit from that water. Mm -hmm. um, but eastern New Mexico, the eastern third of it, really missed out. It's been incredibly dry over there and they're still suffering under some pretty extreme drought conditions out that way. Mm -hmm. They rely mostly on groundwater than river water, although the Pecos River water is quite important out there. And you know, luckily the Pecos is doing okay. They're gonna get their allocations, but mostly they've really had to dig deep into the aquifer out there to keep mm -hmm. anything going. Mm -hmm. But it's been very tough out there. Well, even with such an amazing winter season and the great flows that we're having now, how long will that even last yeah. us in the uh, Rio Grande? Right, that's an excellent question. So we are in the middle of, you know, a 20 year mega drought is what the scientists tend to say. And some folks will look at the Rio Grande and say, oh my gosh, it's high, we're through this. There's no drought on the drought monitor, we're through this. This has bought us a year. All we need is another bad winter and another bad summer to get right back to where we were mm -hmm. in the last couple of years of being dry. It's great news that we've got this, yeah. but we need to kind of keep these wet winters going. We need more monsoon, right? If we're gonna try to really dig our way out of this. So what would an ideal summer look like this year? Because you know, we want mm -hmm. the rain of course, but we're still gonna run, run into that risk of flash flooding. Oh yeah across the burn scars especially. Yeah, so I mean an ideal summer, you know, is a good a good strong monsoon. I would say maybe not the monsoon that we had last year, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but maybe the one from the year before that, mm -hmm. which wasn't too bad, right? We certainly don't want the one from three years ago that everyone called, I believe, the non-soon yep. or whatever <laughs> people came up with. <laughs> um, so what I would like to see personally, though, is a monsoon pattern that was a little bit more evenly distributed. I, you know, I'd like to see the storms fire up in some parts farther east. I'm hoping that this, we're, we're in a pretty typical severe weather pattern mm -hmm. for this time of year here in New Mexico. And mm -hmm. the benefit of that is at least they're starting to get some rain out in the east. You know, unfortunately it's coming down fast and hard and often has hail, but, <laughs> um, but they are getting some moisture out of that. Water nonetheless. Exactly. And that's what we love to see here in New Mexico without a doubt. Yeah. Well, we're gonna take a quick break right now, but when we return, we're gonna continue our conversation here with Andrew Mangum, and we're gonna talk more about the monsoon, of course, and how climate change could even impact it. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back again to the KRQE Monsoon Weather Special. We're joined here again by Andrew Mangum, Senior Service Hydrologist with the National Weather Service in Albuquerque. Andrew, living here in New Mexico, it seems like we always look for when it's going to rain mm. or snow next. So looking ahead, what are some of the biggest challenges we face when it comes to water here in the state? Well, the biggest challenges are gonna come from the fact that our climate is shifting. And, you know, we live in an arid region, we are used to feast or famine. You know, we're used to having it be really dry, but then probably followed up by a pretty wet year right after. The way climate change is impacting this is that we're gonna start seeing what we call an average of extremes. 
And so instead of a couple of years of dry and a couple of years of wet, we're probably going to see several years of dry. And probably those several years of dry on the whole are going to start outweighing the years of wet that we get. So generally the message across the southwest is that we're going to be shifting towards a hotter, drier climate with less water. Now that does not mean that we're not going to get storms. In fact, it could mean that we get more frequent heavy storms. And mm -hmm. that's the part that's really challenging. So if we don't get those nice stratiform events that just gently rain over the state. We're going to be getting pounding monsoon mm -hmm. storms. Mm -hmm. They're bringing a lot of water all at once. So you're looking at prolonged drought with periods of intense flash flooding. Those are the challenges. And then what do you think is the biggest issue when it comes to we need the water, but we don't need all of the water at once. Where is that in between? And how do you think yeah. it's going to kind of turn out for our monsoon? <sighs> It's hard to say with this monsoon. So a lot of people like to talk about, oh, El Nino, what's it gonna do to the monsoon? Unfortunately, El Nino, if anything, sort of has a correlation with a, a, a lower monsoon than usual, but it's not a particularly strong correlation. All of our models are currently pointing to a slightly lower monsoon, but we're still gonna get some heavy, intense storms in there. So, you know, my answer to this question, if we're gonna move to a pattern where we get lots of water all at once, is that the state as a whole and that America as a whole, you know, look at what's happening in California, we need to figure out ways of storing and retaining and managing this water a little bit mm -hmm. when it comes in these gigantic slugs. Do you know that anything that's already happening in our state that people can see and visualize as an impact of some of these just changing climate conditions in New Mexico? That's a good question. Um, I know that there are projects to try to take the Rio Grande out of its banks a little bit and reconnect it to its primary floodplain. Mm -hmm. That's got some real benefits. Uh, those projects are slow. We don't want the Rio Grande totally uncontrolled because then we'll be back in the 40s when it was flooding out the city. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can reconnect the rivers to the banks, that'll help improve the water quality. That'll help slow down flooding, slow down the flows in the river oh. and make that a little bit better. So there are projects like that happening. In some of these areas where we're getting a lot of this burn scar flash flooding, there's quite a bit of work being done to slow down the water. So you're getting catchment basins being built down mountainsides so that as it comes down, it stops for a second, loses a little, of a little bit of energy, and then keeps going down. Uh, I know that there are retention ponds being put up in various places, mostly to try to slow down the water. Another challenge for us with all of this is that a lot of our water is, account is already owed to Texas, you know, for example. We are in, in an interstate agreement, and so this water is spoken for upstream and downstream to a certain extent. Mm. So what do you think we, uh, not just us meteorologists, oh. but everybody living in New Mexico can do to help with the water situation? Yeah, I get this question a lot. What can citizens do, right? Well, this is going to sound like common sense kind of silly stuff, but there are a lot of little things that everyone can do that if we all do it can have a tremendous impact, right? So this is your, you know, if you're brushing your teeth, don't leave the water running. This is changing out to high energy appliances when you can in your building. This is changing your landscaping. Xeriscaping is very popular in the city and actually really pretty when you go look at it. I come from a fairly green place, but I'm blown <laughs> away by how nice it looks. And that's very, very drought resistant, very low water intensive landscaping. Okay. All of these little things can add up like this. Great. quite a bit of stuff that we all yeah, can do awesome. to make a change. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Andrew, for joining us. And thank you at home for joining us, too, for our KRQE Monsoon Weather Special. You can always find uh, our weather information and up-to-date weather information online, too, for, and more information on this year's monsoon at krqe.com and on our news app. We'll see you next time.